Build the AT gun. Build the AT gun. I mean, to be fair, it's probably right, not that Garrison far back up. Garrison's back up. That infantry, dude. Taking fire, G we on to VIP, no one else. Alright, there's the 76 is dead. There's so many infantry in front of me. Are they able to use that AT gun? Yeah, I got him! So after that happened a few weeks ago, I started to think that maybe, just maybe, the AT gun might be one of the most OP and underutilized weapons in the entire game. So over the past few days, I've been trying to build as many AT guns as possible to find out if that's actually the case, and it totally is. AT guns are incredible and almost no one is using them. So here's the thing, if you've ever used one, you probably know that A, they're not as powerful as a tank, and B, they're not as destructive as the artillery. And to make things worse, they're not exactly cheap, because each shot costs 5 munitions, which is actually quite a lot. And then there's the fact that setting one up requires at least two people, a supply guy and an AT guy, which makes fielding one kind of hard to begin with, but when you start to think about what you can actually do with them, you start to realize that holy crap, these things are insane. The best way to wrap your head around this is to stop thinking about AT guns as anti-tank weapons and start to think about them as overpowered machine guns. If there's anywhere on the map that you think is a good spot for a machine gun to lay down some fire on a group of enemies, then it's gonna be a thousand times better if you put an AT gun there. The MG can be devastating, but you can't really do much if the enemy takes cover and you're usually left sticking your head out like a sore thumb when you're firing it, which makes you a pretty easy target for enemy fire. The AT gun pretty much solves all of these problems. You can set it so far away that it's impossible to hit whoever is using it, but close enough that you can still land your shots accurately with it. And there's no hiding from this thing. Any enemy taking cover in a broken building or behind a tree is exposed to your shots, which do a pretty decent amount of splash damage. There are plenty of points in the game with lots of buildings that render artillery and machine gun fire pretty useless. Both strong points and choke points that are not only fairly fortified, but also happen to overlook wide open fields, which makes trying to get to them extremely hard. However, once you feel the gun that's able to shoot through the windows and both inside and behind buildings or even hit a couple of trees and walls next to enemy infantry, those buildings suddenly become a death trap for the enemy team. And unlike the tank, which can take a pretty long time to get to the front lines and might not even be able to get a good angle to shoot from, you can set up an AT gun in under a minute if you have a good squad and it can change things quite dramatically once you do. In a recent private match on Purple Heart Lane, we had two AT guns flanking the entire eastern side of the main road with an additional gun placed smack in the middle of the road. And while we weren't always using them, it was extremely easy to fall back on them and grind to a halt any enemy attack. The shots you fire aren't the same HE rounds that the tank can use, so they don't have a huge amount of splash damage, but it's still pretty decent and you can take several enemies with one shot and it basically renders any cover useless. And here's another clip from Purple Heart Lane. We have infantry already reaching pillbox which is being held by the enemy. In the first shot, I not only take down their garrison, but also get 9 enemy soldiers that had spawned in. I was primed to record how deadly this thing is, but that first shot was literally all it took to kill every single enemy and take the sector. Now, a lot of things have to go right for an AT gun to be actually useful. It has to have a good field of view, you have to have enough munitions to fire it, because as I mentioned, each shot is very, very expensive, and you also have to have decent squad mates to manage to get the gun deployed in just the right angle so your shots don't get blocked by a fence or anything like that. 
I think that's one of the main reasons why you don't see many of these being used. Because most pub squads are just not easy to work with. But once you get the hang of it, there are loads of places where you can set these up. Think about the different maps in the game. Hurricane Forest, you can have one of these shooting at the other side of the valley and it'll pretty much take a sniper or a tank or another AT gun to be able to take you out. Saint-Marie Dumont, great spot for these when attacking the barn or the town. I'm not even gonna mention Foy or Purple Heart Lane again. There's this set of houses in Hill 400 that can be very tricky to take down in offensive mode. You can put an AT gun on the hill and that can hit both inside the house and behind them, so, you know, pretty useful. There are a whole bunch of useful spots that can make a big difference. The bottom line is, you should be using this way more. So, as always, with my videos, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on how to properly use the gun and get the most out of it. So, first of all, both the German and the Allied gun hit slightly to the left of the crossers, so aim like one millimeter to the right of where you want to hit, which for all of you American viewers is like 0.04 inches, whatever that is. Also, bullet drop is very minimal, so don't adjust for it too much. And if you're having trouble building one without getting shot, try to throw some smoke in front of you and lay prone while building it. The cover of smoke won't let the enemy see the gun until after it's built, which is great if you want to surprise a tank with it. You can also have your squad leader pinging targets for you while the smoke cover is still up, which should allow you to hit under complete cover. Now, this won't be very effective against tanks head-on, but it will be quite useful if you can hit their sights. Second, if you're playing AT, you can very easily set up a gun next to a garrison. There's almost always gonna be 50 leftover supplies, which might change with update 8, but for now, if you're playing AT, you can spawn at a garrison and set a gun down without pretty much any help. So definitely keep an eye out for these quick and easy placements. Keep in mind, however, that you will attract some attention, which might end up with your entire location getting RD'd, and that garrison being lost. And last thing before you start spamming these in servers is keep your eye on the amount of munitions. Make sure that your team has enough munitions to sustain fire with this because five munitions per shot is a lot and you can shoot pretty fast. Most of the time you won't need to land more than a couple of shots to get a significant amount of damage done, but if you're planning to hit a position for an extended period of time, then, you know, take the time to place some decent munitions nodes first, because you might drain your team out of munitions otherwise. Okay guys, definitely try this out and tell me what you think of this. I think you'll find a lot of cool places to set down AT guns and hopefully we start seeing more of these in public matches. And hey, if you want, take a couple of screenshots of cool spots you find and send them to me over on Twitter. You can find my Twitter down in the video description. And I will try my best to include those in a later video. Okay guys, that will be all. As always, thanks for watching and I hope I will catch you in the next one.